Okay, right. <laughs> so I started a little bit early, so I'm not sure if there will be people here, but welcome to uh, the Sports Shoes Instagram Live Yoga Flow with me. I'm Nina Nilsson, I'm a British bond meter hurdler and a yoga teacher as well. And I'll be taking you through a yoga for runners flow, I like to call it, um, which is basically just a series of poses designed to kind of help release um, some of the tightness that you might be feeling as a runner and also to kind of release some of that fascial tension that we get surrounding the muscles as well, which is the main kind of um, motive or um, reason for why I do yoga. So just to talk you through the flow really quickly, it's just going to be 25 minutes. It should be nice and simple. I'll try to explain the poses as much as I can. Um, and um, it will be designed to kind of work on the ailments and kind of niggles that we get um, as runners. So things like working on the posterior chain, working on the hips and the hamstrings, which is, you know, one of the main areas that can get tight um, as we're running. Um, and um, hopefully you can take some of these poses with you um, to, to, to kind of try at home and uh, work on your own home practice. Um, so without further ado, all you'll need is your mat and hopefully a nice quiet place so that you can feel nice and relaxed. And we'll get started. So we are going to get started in Vajrasana. So it's called Thunderbolt Pose. So what I want you to do is just find a comfortable position on your mat. You're going to come down onto your knees. Before you come to sit on your heels though, we'll roll the calf muscles out and then come to sit down here in this pose. And what I like to do first is to get in tune with the breath. So you'll hear a lot of yoga teachers say, okay, connect to the breath. But it's really important because <clears throat> with each phase of the breath, so on the inhale, the body tends to tense up and the muscles might not want to ease off. But then as you exhale, that's when the body relaxes and you can really start to sink into poses. So we have to start <laughs> with connecting to the breath, making sure that we become aware and that we are controlling the breath. So in this pose, just try to find a nice, tall, straight spine. Just maybe resting your hands on your lap. We'll take one deep inhale in and then slowly release the breath out. We'll go two more like this, one deep inhale. And it's also really good for um, runners, exhale here. So to almost work on the breath because you can start to improve your respiration. One more inhale. Hold this one at the top, but just keep holding the breath, fill the lungs with air, and then slowly release the breath. And also this should help you feel a little bit more settled at the start of the practice. Now what I want you to do is to slowly roll forwards a little bit so that you can tuck the toes under. We're going to stretch the bottom of our feet. So as runners, you must know this, the plantar fascia gets super, super tight when you're running a lot, especially now if we're running more on the road as opposed to the track. So tuck the toes under, come to sit on your heels, and immediately you'll start to feel this stretch on the bottom of your foot. So we're going to stay here for two more breaths, and it's going to feel uncomfortable. Stay with me. So deep breath in, and a deep breath out. One more. We're almost there. Inhale deeply. And then as you exhale, slowly roll forward. And then maybe just shake the feet out just to kind of release that uh, stretch that we just did. Nice work. This time we're going to come down, back onto the heels. And you're going to press with your fingertips into the mat. Use your core muscles. As you inhale, we're going to almost push the mat down to roll back and lift the knees off of the mat. Now this one you'll feel on the top of the ankle, uh, the top of the foot. So we're working just almost releasing that kind of ankle joint. Exhale here, keep holding, almost try to lift the knees as high as they can go. One more inhale. And then as you exhale, just release the knees down and again, shake the feet out. We're going to roll ourselves over the tabletop anyway. So once you're rolled out here, and you've given the feet a little bit of a shake, we're going to walk the knees out to about hips distance apart. And then come to place your palms down, make sure they're underneath your shoulders. So you've got correct alignment here in tabletop position. Now I like to... Um, Kind of release the spine first because if you can release kind of all the tension in the back any other pose that you'll do should feel a little bit easier so as we inhale we're going to drop the belly we drop the spine squeeze the shoulder blades together and start to look up this is cow pose as you exhale we're going to push the floor away and drop the head down maybe shake yes and shake no just to release the neck a little bit one more inhale drop the belly drop the spine look up Exhale, rounding, almost pushing the floor away with the hands. And then the head drops last. Make sure the head is nice and relaxed. One more like this. Inhale, rolling through cow. And exhale, rounding the spine, pushing the floor away. 
nice work. As you inhale, we're going to come back to find this neutral spine, so nice and straight. This time, as we exhale, we're going to walk the hands out, so we're just opening out the shoulders, which is another thing that can become tight from running. Try to walk the hands out as far as they can, make sure to keep the hips where they are, so we're almost dropping the chest trying to get the chest as close to the mat as we can. If you can, then you can tap your elbows onto the mat, maybe bend to bring the palms together, bend the elbows. And then this is more of a shoulder stretch on, this, on the front of the shoulders. So holding here for an inhale, and then a slow exhale. Nice, as you next inhale, we're just gonna walk ourselves back towards our tabletop position. And this time as we exhale, we're just gonna walk the feet out and find ourselves in a high plank position. So once you're here, I want you to tuck the tailbone under. So with a lot of my yoga flows um, designed for runners, kind of what I would deliver to runners, I always make sure that we work a little bit off the core because it's really, really important for that hip alignment to find that neutral pelvis to have a strong core. So we're gonna stay here for one more inhale and a slow exhale. One more inhale, good. And as you exhale, we're gonna drop the knees down untuck the toes and then drop the chest all the way down to the mat. Keep the hands where they are. Try to press into the mat with the top of your feet. This is going to activate the hamstrings, activate the glutes just to protect the lumbar spine, the lower back just a little bit. So pressing into the mat with your palms. As you inhale, wait to scoop the chest, just the chest, up. The knees, sorry, the elbows might still be bent here. So now we're in cobra. So this one's really designed to stretch the front of your body, so the core, the lower part of your core as well. So you shouldn't really be feeling too much of an impingement in the lower back. If you are, just drop yourself down a little bit and try to shine the chest forwards. So hold here for an inhale. And as you exhale, we're gonna just push the bum back into tabletop to flex the feet and then slowly lift the tailbone up into downward facing dog. So the first one of the practice, I always make it a little bit dynamic. So come up high onto the toes. And then as you exhale, we'll pedal out the feet. So the left heel drops, the right heel drops. Maybe you start to drop the hips down. And whenever I give downward facing dog to athletes and to runners, I always say that it's best to probably bend the knees once you find a stable downward facing dog. Uh, we've got <laughs> tight hamstrings, tight shoulders, and it's gonna be, this is actually quite a difficult pose for us runners to get into. So I always say it's best if you bend the knees so that you can have a straight back and almost pushing your chest to kind of move towards your knees. And then that's better than having these dead straight legs and the heels rooted down, because it can become quite painful. So we're gonna hold here for an inhale. And slow exhale. Press into all 10 fingertips, it will help to kind of protect the wrists. One more inhale. And as you exhale, we're gonna come up high onto the toes and then take 10 really small steps, so inchworming yourself towards your hands. Once you get here, we're going to soften the knees, so find a nice bend in the knees, and then you're just going to forward fold. Now, when I say a forward fold for us runners as well, most likely our knees are going to be bent. It's super painful for the hamstrings. And I always say it's better to have uh, the belly connecting to the thighs as opposed to having this kind of beautiful uh, looking forward fold. It's best that you kind of um, connect the belly to the thighs, so you're kind of um, resting on the thighs and allowing the head to drop here. So now we're in forward fold. You'll already feel this one in the hamstrings. And we're just gonna stay here for one more inhale and one more exhale. So us runners, most of us, especially if we're running shorter distances, we'll have really, really tight hamstrings. Um, so we're hopefully gonna release some of that tension throughout this practice. So as you next inhale, I want you to start to straighten the legs now. Your chest will lift most likely. And now I want you to find straight legs and a straight back. So now we're in this halfway lift, this kind of half forward fold position. And you almost want to um, mimic this kind of cobra feeling with the chest. So you want it to be nice and open, maybe squeeze the shoulder blades together. And you'll feel the hamstring stretching here. We'll hold for an inhale and a slow exhale. Slowly and gently, I want you to start to just soften the knees a little bit so that you can pistol grip, when I say that, it's index and middle finger, almost like a gun pistol, uh, your big toes. So you're gonna pistol grip the big toes here. Now I want you to, we're gonna work on kind of flossing the hamstrings here. So I want you to bend into the left leg. So the left knee is gonna be bent. The right leg is hopefully gonna be nice and straight. So 
letting go of the right big toe. As you next inhale, wait to swing this right hand up to the ceiling. Your gaze will follow the thumbs and you'll immediately feel this kind of neural stretch down the back of the right hamstring. And so we're just kind of clearing some of these neural pathways. A lot of the time when we feel hamstring tension, it's sometimes um, through the nerves as opposed to the muscles. So it's always good to clear everything. Holding here. As you exhale, we're going to swing that right hand down and we're just going to switch sides. So pistol grip the right big toe, let go of the left, bend into the right leg. And then when you're ready, as you inhale, we're going to swing the left hand up to the ceiling, gazing at the thumb. Once we get there, hold for an inhale and an exhale. As you next inhale, we're going to swing that left hand back. And then come back into this halfway lift and maybe see if it feels a little bit easier. Maybe starting to reach the fingertips down towards the mat, but still keeping that straight back in the straight legs. As you exhale, we're going to bend the knees to plant the palms down. And you're going to take one huge step back with the right foot. Once you're there, drop the right knee and relax the right foot. Now, before we get into this uh, hip flexor stretch, just want you to check the alignment. So make sure that the left knee has a nice, nice degree angle. It's always important to check alignment when we go into these poses, especially as runners. Um, and make sure your knee isn't overshooting the big toe. So you want it to be, your chin is almost perpendicular to the mat. Good. As we next inhale, we're going to just um, almost sink into the hips here to lift the chest and the head up. So you can either stay here. If this is enough of a hip flexor stretch, just stay here. Or if you want to maybe deepen it, maybe start to lift the hands up towards the ceiling and you'll feel the right hip flexor really stretching. So again, with us runners, our hip flexors are most likely always uh, tight. We're using them a lot, especially if you're running shorter distances. So it's always good to kind of release some of these stretches, uh, these muscles. Holding one more inhale. As you exhale, we're just gonna bring the both hands down inside of this left foot. So once you're here, you might need to heel toe the left foot out slightly just to create space. Then as you inhale, you're going to flex the right foot, lift the right knee off of the mat. And then as you exhale, the left hand is going to swing up to the ceiling. The gaze will follow the thumb. Revolved crescent lunge. This one you'll feel in the left glutes. We're kind of stretching them laterally. So it's kind of targeting these lateral rotators on the side of our glutes, which we use a lot as runners and could become quite tight. Holding for an inhale. And then as you exhale, swing that left hand back down inside of the left foot, drop the right knee and relax the right foot. As you next inhale, just maybe lifting the chest up slightly. We're just going to create space before we find this next intense hip um, stretch. As you exhale, try to see if you can come down to the right forearm. Already you'll feel this stretch maybe through the right hip flexor, maybe through the uh, outside of the left hip. Maybe if it feels good, you come down to the left forearm as well to find this full lizard pose. Now, this is an intense hip stretch. So if you're down in both forearms and it doesn't feel good, maybe just come up onto one palm, maybe come up onto two palms. Just playing around, making sure that uh, this feels comfortable for you. With yoga, it's not really um, the goal to kind of make yourself feel uncomfortable. You always just move to how your body wants to move. So in lizard pose, we hold for an inhale and take a slow exhale. Nice work. As you next inhale, just slowly and gently coming up to both palms if you're not already there. And then we're just going to heel toe this left foot in between the palms. So bring it back to the center of the mat. As you next in, sorry, we'll take an exhale. As you next inhale, we're going to lift the back knee off of the mat and then turn the foot so it's facing 90 degrees. The arch of the foot will be parallel to the top of your mat. Exhale here, just give yourselves a little second. As you inhale, wait to look up, lift the chest forward, kind of that cobra action with the chest. Then as you exhale, we're going to slowly start to straighten this front leg, just a little bit, and finding ourselves in this kind of pyramid pose. So with the pyramid pose, there's an intense uh, stretch for the belly of the hamstring, so releasing some of that hamstring tension. Now the knee doesn't have to be dead straight here, you can have a little bit of a micro bend. But if your leg is nice and dead straight, maybe see if you can lift the toes off of that left foot and you'll feel the stretch in the calves as well. Um, so holding here for one inhale and a slow exhale. We'll go one more. So I tend to hold some of the major poses for about a few breaths. It takes the body a while to kind of let go and kind of um, relax into these stretches. So 
it's always nice, with, especially with these intense ones, to kind of just hold it here for a little bit and let the body kind of get comfortable in it. Nice. As you next inhale, maybe start to look forwards and then slowly and gently swing that back foot, so the right foot forwards to meet the left. And we're going to come back into this halfway lift. So maybe see if you can start to notice a little bit of a difference between the right and the left hamstring. Maybe see if you can start to root the fingertips down towards the mat. We're going to go through the other side. So as you next exhale, big, huge step back with the left foot this time. Once you're there, drop the left knee and relax the back foot. Good. As you next inhale, you're going to sink into the hips to allow the chest to rise. And you're going to look forward if you want to and you want to deepen the stretch, maybe lift the arms up as well. So low lunge. Holding here for an inhale and a slow exhale. Good. As you next inhale, we're going to drop both hands, if they're up, um, inside of that right leg. And then slowly heel toe, maybe the right foot out, just to create a little bit of space. Now, if it feels good, we're going to exhale, come down to the left forearm first. So this half lizard pose. Now, for a lot of us, this uh, left side is usually a little bit more tight than the right side, so just take your time with this side. Um, this might already be a good uh, stretch for the left hip flexor, but if not, maybe come down to the right forearm as well. I'm going to stay on just one forearm <laughs> because my left hip flexor is super, super tight. And we're just going to stay here for one inhale and one exhale. This pose also can target some of these external rotators on the outside of the other um, leg that's not being stretched here. Um, and for a lot of us athletes, we, I know a lot of athletes and runners can suffer from sciatica. And a lot of the time it's, it's a different kind of sciatica than what you get from like a slip disc. It's um, caused by hypertonic uh, piriformis, big word, um, which can press onto that sciatic nerve and kind of give you the shooting pain down the leg. So this kind of pose is great for releasing some of that tension. So as you next inhale, come up onto the palms. So I've made you hold that one a little bit longer. And then heel toe. Uh, sorry, no. Come onto the palms. As you next inhale, we're going to lift the back knee off of the mat and then twist the back foot to face 90 degrees. So the arch of the foot is parallel to the top of the mat. As you next inhale, we're going to swing the... Sorry. Oh my God, I've lost it. <laughs> Bring that back foot um, to face forwards again. I'm so sorry. I've just jumped ahead of the, of, the, of the flow here. As you next inhale, you're going to swing the right hand up to the ceiling. We forgot about this one on this side. And again, you're going to stretch the external rotators here on the right side. So, sorry if I confused you, I confused myself there. Holding here for an inhale. Now as you exhale, you're going to bring that right hand back down and then twist the foot to face 90 degrees. The arch of the foot will be parallel to the top. And then slowly frame the front ankle with both hands. Slowly and gently as you inhale, you're going to lift the chest to look up. So this is the final length through the spine. And then as you exhale, you're going to start to straighten the front leg, finding this pyramid pose here on this side. So again, an intense hamstring stretch. And then if the leg is nice and dead straight, you maybe want to stretch the calves. Then you lift the toes off of the mat here on the right side. And you'll feel this in the calf as well. Holding here for one more inhale. And take a slow exhale. Nice. One more inhale. And an exhale. Good. As you next inhale, I just want you to bend into this front leg slightly. This is to allow both palms to plant down. You're going to swing the right foot back to meet the left. And we're just going to start to reset the body through it a little bit nyasa. So as you exhale, we're going to drop the knees down, relax the feet, and then drop the chest down. This time as you inhale, keep the hands where they are. Lift to bring the chest up. Maybe if you want to, you can lift the hips and the knees as well into upward facing. And then as you exhale, tailbone lifts, find downward facing dog. So now, compared to the first downward facing dog of the practice, maybe see if you can just straighten the legs a little bit. It's still okay if there's a micro bend. And start to gaze towards the belly button. Hold for an inhale. And take a slow exhale. Good. As you next inhale, I want you to slowly bend the knees, look forward. We'll take one huge step with the right foot, and then the left. Come into the halfway lift that we found, so that straight leg straight back. 
And then as you exhale, we're gonna just forward fold again, bring belly to the thigh, drop the head down. Good. As you next inhale, we're just gonna to start to bend the knees to bring the bum down. Maybe lift the heels here, and then slowly and gently bring yourself to seated on your mat. Maybe give the legs a little bit of a shake, maybe sway them side to side. Now, so with a lot of my practices, especially the ones that I deliver to athletes, I always make sure to add a little bit of core work. Um, this is just, it's so important that we've got a strong core as runners. Um, it's just to kind of help to align the hips. So a lot of the time when we get tired as runners, we tend to arch the back, lean back, and then have this huge kind of hyperextension through the spine. And that can lead to lower back pain. So it's always important to kind of use some core work to just realign the hips. And then also I'll do bridge pose afterwards, which will help you kind of find that alignment that you want from the hips. So make sure that you're rooted down with the sit bones so and maybe move the glute muscles out a little bit. And then as you inhale, we're gonna lift one foot off of the mat, then the other, finding boat pose. So with boat pose, your hands and palms are facing the ceiling and you're almost, again, shining the chest forward. So holding here for an inhale and a slow exhale, maybe lifting the arms up slightly just to make it a little bit harder. One more inhale. And then as you exhale, we're slowly gonna to start to lower the torso down. Keep lowering, keep lowering. Once you get to the mat, the shoulders and the feet will hover for one second, take an inhale. And then as you exhale, release yourself down into the mat. Squeeze the knees into the chest, just to give the core a little bit of a rest. And then slowly and gently, just come to plant the feet down into the mat here. So this is the one where I, I, I love to do this one. I do it for my warm up before I go to the track. Um, it's to kind of allow you to feel what it's like for the correct um, kind of tilt of the pelvis. So what I want you to do is to almost try to tuck the pelvis under, so pressing uh, the lower back into the mat so the belly button kind of pushes down towards the spine. And then as you inhale, we're gonna lift the hips, lift the bum off the mat, finding bridge pose. So this one we're really engaging the glutes, engaging the hamstrings. And in, almost imagine as if there's a piece of paper underneath your feet and you're trying to rip that paper apart. That's when you really start to feel the glutes working. So holding here for an inhale, try not to arch the back in this one. Make sure to tuck the pelvis under. One more, big breath in, and a big belly breath out. Slowly release yourself down to the mat. Make sure the lower back hits first before the hips. Good, and then squeeze the knees into the chest. We're just gonna stretch the uh, outside of the hips first before we start to relax. So slowly and gently, just plant the left foot down into the mat. Keep hold of the right knee. Then what I want you to do is to, we're gonna externally rotate this leg. So I kind of twist in the thigh to bring the shin to parallel to the top of your mat. Then you're gonna plant the right foot just under the knee here on the left side. We're gonna thread the needle through, so right hand comes through this gap. And then you're gonna grab hold of the back of the thigh or the back of the shin and interlace your fingers for a good grip. So we take one big inhale here. And then as you exhale, you're gonna slowly pull the left knee into the chest and straight away you're gonna feel this in the right, um, external rotators, so the deep six lateral rotators here on this right side. But also, commonly what you might feel is the lower back also feeling a little bit of a stretch. These things are all connected, and that's what I love about yoga is that um, you find that your whole body's connected and one stretch might release something else. So with every exhale, remembering that the body relaxes and that parasympathetic nervous system is coming into play, try to pull the knee into the chest just a little bit further, just with the exhales. Seeing if you can start to release some of that tension on the right side of your glutes. We'll hold for one more breath. And slowly exhale. Good, on your next inhale, slowly release the left foot down to the mat, and then release the right foot down. Maybe give a quick shake here, we'll go through the other side. So, squeeze the left knee into the chest first, and then start to externally rotate the thigh to bring the left foot onto the, just below the knee here on the right side. Thread the needle, grab hold of the back of the thigh or the shin. Maybe try to push the knee away just to kind of create a little bit of space. And then as you next exhale, we'll slowly pull the knee into the chest. And again, you'll feel this on the outside of the left glute. For me, this left side is always super tight. I used to have sciatica here on the left side and always try to make sure this piriformis is stretched out. But for some reason, it always comes back to this kind of 
natural level of tightness. So remember with every exhale, just try to pull the knee just a little bit further into the chest with each round. One more breath. And slow exhale. And then as you next inhale, we're slowly going to release the right foot down first, then release the left. Maybe give a quick shake here before you then start to extend the legs out. Try to get the heels to meet the corner of your mat. Maybe final adjustments. We're going to come into my favourite pose, which is Shavasana, which means just lying down here doing nothing. So we'll take one deep inhale here. Hold the breath at the top. I make everyone do this because you want to feel this body tensing up. So keep holding the breath, keep holding. And then slowly let the breath go. And you'll feel yourself, to use a yoga teacher term, melt into the mat and just start to relax here. So I always, always, always put this at the end of my practice. And I say, don't skip it. Please don't skip Shavasana because it's so important just to kind of let the body know that we're, we've stopped moving and that it can start to relax. So just stay here for five breaths in your own time. Just take five big breaths. And you'll start to feel this relaxation. And the reason that I, or that we do uh, Shavasana is, it's when you can really start to feel this parasympathetic nervous system start to kick in. So that's a big word. So the parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for our rest and digest phase. So um, I always say that you don't, you don't find the, the recovery benefits of yoga until you do Shavasana. Because yeah, we're moving the muscles around, we're moving the connective tissue, we're moving um, ligaments and tendons and muscles and the fascia. Um, but if we don't let our bodies know that, okay, they're done moving, we kind of get stuck in this kind of mode of um, stress. So when we're moving all of these connective tissues, it's actually a form of stress for the body, a, a form of physical stress. And we kind of have to let the body know that actually we're done. And then it will start to remove all the toxins that we've kind of released from um, this movement. Um, and it will start to um, activate this lymphatic drainage. Um, <laughs> big words. But especially as athletes, we've got a lot of toxins. When we do kind of lactic acid runs, all the byproducts of that um, uh, breakdown of lactic acid still kind of remains in the blood. So it's always good to kind of kick that lymphatic drainage into play and just let the body release and, and flush out all these toxins. So we've probably stayed here for five breaths. So if you want to, you can start to come out of Shavasana and just kind of, um, yeah, just move the body around. Make sure to observe how it's feeling. And always, always, if you uh, finish your yoga practice, make sure to drink loads of water. Again, as I said, that lymphatic drainage system is working. So we need to help the body flush that out. So always drink loads of water, I'm sure, as well as you're probably already doing that. So I'm <laughs> doing to remind you. And um, thank you so much for playing with me. Um, please um, stay safe, stay at home. Um, I encourage you to follow the whole um, Sports Shoes Stay at Home series as well. They've got so many good lives and uh, things for you to get involved at, at home. So um, check out their page and make sure that you're following that. And I always end <laughs> my flows the proper way. Namaste, everybody. Thank you so much.